set up to use this camera, but it didn't. It didn't work. You're live. I hope. It's, I hope we're actually okay. No, nope, that audio. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can 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 uh, can anybody hear us? This is like not making, this is not responding. Oh, you can. Okay, sweet, awesome. There's like a very rudimentary little uh, thing that shows whether or not I can, you can, the camera's working. What's up everybody? Um, we're still here in Canmore, obviously still here in the snow and stuff. Um, kind of bummed not to be racing, but also I can't, I won't lie, it, it was not like entirely unexpected. We were kind of sitting around after having dinner uh, that night. Um, wondering what was going to happen like kind of going wow i guess this is actually happening and then we got this uh crazy email finally saying that um that things were canceled so uh luckily this has been a, like a really cool week otherwise uh the number of people who are subscribed to the channel just got to twenty five thousand. like the winter collection we're super super psyched on and um I don't know, just had tons of positive comments and stuff from everybody. So you're so all super awesome. So basically, we wanted to come live because we did this last time when we really released something. And if you guys have any questions about like sizing or material or what it fits like, let us know. Um, we expect things to sell out probably pretty quickly this time, just because it is like Christmas and shopping season. So make sure you get your order in today if you can. Um, yeah, we, there's a lot of questions about like training and traveling to races and stuff a mm -hmm. lot of questions about if daytona will be canceled which we honestly have no idea about but if, as soon as texas was canceled we kind of had to reset and you know focus just for that and it was hard for us because we were looking forward to going somewhere warm and spending the last couple of weeks into daytona riding outside but we've had to like mentally refocus to be on the trainer for another couple of weeks so that's mm -hmm. honestly the biggest bummer yeah I, I think i've actually had a p little bit harder time than paula like when we got those rollers last week that was Seriously, like a last ditch effort for me to not go um, crazy and <laughs> going back down into the garage to yesterday to try to do another hard brick session was was pretty brutal. So someone just asked what size sweatshirt I wear. I'm a small in the sweatshirt. I was kind of unsure about ordering these because they actually don't even come in an extra small and I'm not like the tiniest person. So someone who's smaller than me might, the hoodie might not be for them just because it does fit kind of bulkier. Um, but the small fits me well. I This is a small as well in the long sleeve. Um, I'm about 5'7", 130 pounds. So this is a medium. This is a medium for Eric. I'm 5'9", about 150. So we think the sweater is like, we kind of like them being a little baggier and more comfortable um, just because of like the nature of what mm -hmm. they are. That being said, if you ordered a crew neck, the crew necks were probably a couple inches longer than these are. These are like super true to size. I feel real comfortable in it. You know, when you, if you're going to hug somebody or whatever, don't feel too much stretch across the back, <laughs> but um, there's, there's like super, super high quality. We're like crazy stoked on, on how these turn Yeah. Out. They were a little more expensive for us, but I think, you know, that's kind of been our philosophy all along is ordering stuff that's really nice and that you guys will love and not just like cranking out merchandise that's as cheap for us as possible. So yeah, it's like Supima cotton grown in the U S organic really nice. Hopefully will last a long time. We've put them through the wash and they stand up to that really well. So yeah, they're pre-washed and everything. So they're going to yeah. be exactly the same. They're actually theoretically, hopefully should get a little bit better as you have them. So we'll do they in. shrink roughly the same as the last in the laundry? Um, I've put this through the, I usually don't put things in the dryer, but I accidentally put this one in the dryer and it didn't really shrink much. It still fits yeah. me really well. So the t-shirts are, are the same brand as like, if you got the heavyweight a shirt from last year it's the same type of brand except these the t-shirts are actually organic cotton so they're a little softer a little more mid-weight but same brand and they yeah we've had pretty good luck with them yeah so not getting smaller and you know like any cotton shirt it's going to shrink a little if you put it in the dryer but i would recommend just like hang drying it to make sure that they stay uh the same size um someone asked what is the best beanie for after a swim workout below freezing run to my truck <laughs> i'd probably say the marina i'd beanie. say this one yeah it's just a little bit thicker it's kind of hard to show on camera and everything but this is a little bit lighter weight this is a little bit thicker and just like merino is is really well known for being able to handle moisture and temperature changes and everything so i've worn this one as like warm out and i wanted to take a shirt take the jacket off um and it felt fine and we've worn it on like a 
literally zero degrees yeah. Celsius, you could like also, minus 20 Celsius hike. I'd say you could run in that hat too, just because it is tighter. Like this mm -hmm. one's a little bit floppier. You can wear it both ways. You can like wear it like this. So it's a little looser or you can fold it up. And the taco label we have shows on both sides. So mm -hmm. either way you wear it, you can see the logo. Um, this one's not quite as warm just because it's like waffle nature and lets a little bit of cold air in, but from, you know, it's warm enough. You can wear it inside and in any, yeah. basically any climate in the U S <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there were there, we have had a couple of questions here just about, um, like packing stuff and travel. Uh, do I put padding around my wheels in the bag to protect them a bit in the bag? Um, we just have a padded wheel bag and then the Sycon bag is really well padded. Paula goes a little more intense on the, the padding than I do, but I've had super good luck with that Sycon bag minus the wheels snapping off, which you can always just get new ones at Home Depot. So. Yeah. I usually cut out for my disc wheel. I cut out like two big pieces of cardboard and put them on either side of the wheel just cause I've had, you know, little holes happen in my disc, uh, through a bunch of traveling. So with the giant Canyon box, that has been a very big topic of conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sponsored by Canyon next year. We just use that box for shipping, but it has kind of been funny to see everyone like excited about us riding Canyon next year. Yeah. Um, we're flying to Daytona, not driving. Yeah. We sort of cap our drives at about like eight or nine hours to races just because Driving takes a toll on your body and Florida is way too far. So definitely mm -hmm. flying. It would also be pretty tragic if we like <laughs> made it all the way to Kansas or something. And then the race got canceled while we were on route. That would be horrible because there's a quarantine period to come back into Canada. And we really don't want to do that again if we don't have to. But someone asked if the hats are lined. No, they're not. They're just no. like the same on the inside as the outside. Mm -hmm. Like you could flip this inside out and be the same. Yeah. Um, Paula, do the masks come in any other color? Well, we have some prototypes in other colors. That's what I've been wearing that you've probably seen, but currently they're just in the is. Navy. Um, we were kind of unsure about the one I've been wearing because it's just like a pattern it, or a print. It's not an actual like different material. So um, yeah, we're thinking about getting this kind of like textured color and then the light blue. So if you think we should give a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, the Navy kind of works with everything and it doesn't show dirt as much. So. Um, that's our most popular one. Eric needs a haircut. We actually have haircuts tomorrow, both of us. And Flynn got a haircut yesterday that mm -hmm. was outrageously expensive because he's so bad. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking forward to a haircut for a while. So thank you <clears throat> for that suggestion. Is there international shipping yet? So for international shipping, this has been like an ongoing struggle for us because our warehouse is in the US. It costs a lot to ship internationally no matter what. Um, we looked at different ways of kind of discounting shipping to Canada because we know a lot of our audiences from there. And also in previous shipments, we've had issues getting it to some countries like Dubai and um, Hong Kong, stuff like that. So we've actually disabled shipping to a few countries this time just because we've had packages come back and it just like creates a frustrating experience on both ends. So in terms of shipping to Canada, that's not really cheaper this time. We're still kind of looking at options for that. Within the U.S., if you order 100, over $100, the shipping is free. So with the hoodies and the hats, that should be, like, maybe doable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. I mean, it, we, we would love to, and that's some, a thing we want to get to, but we would literally have to, like, set up a new warehouse in Canada and ship half our stuff up here and then have someone <clears throat> sending that out. And it's just at this point, it's, like, pretty cost prohibitive to where we... But in terms of yeah. um, the yeah. U.K. and Norway, we do ship to the U.K. Yeah. <clears throat> and to Europe. It, it's a little slow right now just because of COVID. And once stuff gets sent out with US USPS, it's a little out of our control, but we've so far been able to manage any issues or resend stuff out that's been sent back. And it's like a full-time job. So yeah, our shipping yeah. department, customer service department has been crushing it. That's me. <laughs> How tall are we? I'm like five, seven. I'm five, nine. The long, the long sleeve tees fit pretty long like they come down to like here on me oh yeah and one thing i guess you can probably see it better on this that we're pretty excited about is the uh split hem on this or whatever i'm not sure it's like it plays a huge function but it's sort of like it's a pretty nice look and feels good i know if this that's... is a winter release do you have more plans to release more hats so currently in stock i think we have about three of our different hats the hybrid mm -hmm. trucker the camper and the uh herringbone camper mm -hmm. the trail hats were super popular but unfortunately the silicone transfer is really fragile because of the small lettering so we've had like half a dozen hats 
show up with the labels peeling off, which is like really frustrating for us. So we've resent out replacements to all those people. But because of that, we're probably not going to do that, that kind of transfer again. Mm -hmm. We could do the trail hat with a different type of um, patch on it. That's not so delicate because yeah. just with the nature of like printing out hundreds of hats, shipping them all, there's, you know, inevitably going to be some uh, quality yeah. Errors, so we're, we're going to be doing another like classic standard trucker hat in our next release of things, probably with just like a full on patch, um, like super, yeah, super classic look and everything similar to like the very first trucker hat that we put out with like the mesh back and solid front. So pretty excited about that. Just kind of going <clears throat> through a lot of designs right now on it. Um, somebody asked if we've seen Wadi's van, of course, Wadi texts me multiple times a day as he's doing stuff to his van. So we have definitely, <laughs> I, and when Wadi was trying to decide to buy a van, we were getting texted every single van, he, you know, um, it's like a very intense process trying to pick out a van because they all have so many like little weird things about them. So very up on that process. Um, any tips of winter training with hopes of racing in July? Wow. July is a long time from now. And if you're in Canada, I think you'll have lots of time to train outdoors before that race. And our mentality this year, since racing has been either really far on the horizon or really uncertain is just maintaining sort of a base fitness, which is good for this time of year. And then as races become more promising or looking more likely, you just ramp it up a little bit. So in terms of winter training, we love running outside, but because we have a race so soon, we're not really willing to risk falling or getting injured running in the cold. So we've been doing treadmill a lot, but if we were just in a base season, we would run outside more with like ice spikes, proper clothing. Um, the snow kind of forces you to slow down a bit, which I think is good this time of year anyway. So yep. if you're racing in July, that's how I'd approach uh, the winter and do like cross country skiing. I don't know, other outdoor activities that keep it enjoyable because you can go pretty crazy training just inside. Yeah. So. Um, somebody just asked, I am, I'm wearing a medium. I pretty much wear a medium and everything. I'm sometimes on the line between small and medium, but everything we've done, medium um somebody asked um any tips how to recover fast from a hard long ride that one just jumped out because like i've been struggling a bit with that actually and for me the biggest thing is fueling properly inside of the ride so getting like 350 calories during the ride every hour mm -hmm. makes it so that you get off and you're still feeling like you could have done a little bit more then you have your protein shake then you hit your norm text or like whatever your process is post ride but during is is huge does Flynn prefer Canmore or Portland? My friend Jamie asked us. Mm. I think he prefers Canmore because of the outdoor situation. We have like a forest right out back and he can go around out there. So he gets way more like off leash time in Canmore because there's a super good off leash area close to us. And he loves the snow. And he has a really good friend named Rupert who's Jordan Bryden's dog. So I don't know. I think he likes Canmore. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's hard to say. I think the, the off leash right nearby like that we can walk to. It, they're actually pretty similar. We have a field out back in Portland and an off leash right nearby, but um, there's also just, we have so many friends with dogs here. It's, it's a kind of out of control. Will Flynn ever design a TCL product? We're kind of, we've been thinking about what would work for like a dog TCL thing, like a collar, or a, a mm -hmm. handkerchief or like whatever. Yeah. I think <laughs> I don't know, that's a thing we'd like to do, like maybe a collaboration with if there was like, a, you know, whatever, some dog uh, leash company where we weren't just like making up a TTL leash, but take somebody else's thing, have them work with us. And yeah. Just his current like Flynn brand or his something. His current sponsor, <laughs> uh, Boss Dog, it's his food his food sponsor <laughs> they're coming out with a sweet line of like collars and leashes so flynn's getting some of those delivered so it'd be sweet to maybe like do a collaboration with someone who already has super good quality collars like boss dog and put our logo stamp on it or something or our colors or yeah there's so many opportunities or possibilities for that ever think about doing a ttl training camp yeah we, we would have. love to like covid makes everything like that kind of impossible right now but someday we would love to yeah so if you guys have been watching uh just like the weekly stuff jordan um he's ultraman world champion and he's actually really good at um he's gonna help us design some new things he's a graphic designer and he's organized some camps in the past and we're like hoping that he can kind of work with us on doing something like that maybe like a camp in saint george where we you know you can ride gravel you can ride road and do a little swimming in a lake and you know something a little bit more our style than just you know the typical thing but um It'll kind of depend on coronavirus, obviously. Someone asked what if the coffee mugs are being restocked and are the crew necks being restocked. The coffee mugs are on order. So they are on the way. They're currently because of how they're made, 
they're like, they take a long time because this is not like a print on a mug. It's actually like made into the mug. Yeah. So um, they take about like four to five weeks to be made. So yeah. they're going to be ready before Christmas. Yeah. As soon as we sold out of these, I called up the guy literally and was like, put me front in line, please, whatever it takes. We've had a, gotten a pretty good relationship <laughs> with them because normally they only sell these. They're just working with like coffee shops and stuff. So if you start a coffee shop, you'll get 150 of these. But we've been ordering like 150 or 200, whatever, every couple of months. So we got to the front of the line. They're coming. And uh, the way it actually works is they're made in Italy, just like the base kind of thing. Then they're shipped over here. And then they're, the art is put on. And then they're hit again with another round through the furnace and everything. And so like this is never coming off because it's underneath the glaze. But a um, lot extra detail. So will we ever partner with one of our sponsors for a TTL race kit? We're kind of in a hard situation because both of us have different kit sponsors. I'm working with Zoot, Eric's with Castelli. Mm -hmm. And ultimately we'd like to have the same kit sponsor, but because of like, uh, you know, our sponsor obligation contract lengths of time, we can't do that this year. So we're sort of staying out of the kit business for now. Hopefully in 2022, we'll have the same kit sponsor and we can work on designing, um, you know, some more like active wear and cycling kits and stuff, but that's never really been our goal. We kind of like the post-workout um, casual stuff, at least for now. Mm -hmm. So definitely not in the works for 2021, but uh, maybe next year. Yeah. We, we've, we've thought about doing like something more cycling focused. Like, you know, if it made <laughs> sense, like I would like to have a gravel Jersey or something like that. And like if Paula did a, a sports bra or just something that was like a little more specific that she could do with you and I could do with Castelli, like that would be, yeah, like kind of a cool project and um yeah so we're not definitely not no but uh pretty focused on yeah on the comfort stuff will you guys ever do full iron mans of course someone has to ask that question <laughs> i don't know i don't uh, like i'd say yes we will eventually especially because in the sponsor world kona is such a big focus and importance for like everybody so maybe someday we still feel like we're kind of new to 70.3 in terms of like we're 30, but we came from the ITU background. So we've only been 70.3 for a couple of years. So I still think I still have a lot of like improvements to be made at that distance before stepping up to a full. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any interest to do an Ironman where you're like riding up and down a, a highway for, you know, four hours, but I'm pretty interested in like the extreme stuff like Norse man or Patagon man, uh, things like that, especially if they involve a trail run. Uh, and I got to think that like someone is pretty soon here going to do, do like a pure gravel triathlon race. You know, we, we did like a little film around the overland triathlon, <clears throat> you know, three years back. And I have been just kind of waiting for that. Something, somebody do that as an actual race. And if that was an iron distance, I'd be into it. What do you think about Lionel's hour record? Well, we're big Lionel Sanders fans. <laughs> yeah. We really like him. We think he's like he's, super entertaining to watch on YouTube. He's very real. He's he good for triathlon for sure. And the broadcast for the hour record was super impressive. Amazing. We watched it while we were on the trainer and how they were able to show the entire thing mm -hmm. and have good commentators. And then the fact that he got it by a ton of time is, yeah. was super cool and inspiring. And yeah. I do think that him training for that was very applicable to training for Daytona because we're basically riding on a racetrack there. So well, all the respect for Lionel. <laughs> yeah, that was super cool. Super cool to watch. Collaboration video with Lionel? Well, we, I, haven't, we haven't been in the same place as him. We, we were in the same place as him for like a month uh, back in Tucson. And it was right when things were kind of getting touchy and we kind of agreed on both sides that we didn't want to, you know, get together while we were supposed to be distancing and everything. But um, Talbot and I chat about it like once every couple months at least. And that'd be pretty fun to put together. I don't know what we would do. It'd, ha it'd have to be for like Lionel and I to to mesh, you know. We we have some very <laughs> different race strategies, and, but it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Somebody okay. asked something about like Achilles. That just Google um, eccentric calf raises. That is like the best thing to do for when you're coming back from an Achilles injury. Top three competitors for us at Daytona. All star. Although official start lists haven't been released yet. Because, yeah. Which is kind of weird. But very I guess. Strange. It's a little bit of a strange time, obviously. So I think they're kind of waiting to the last minute to know who can travel. And if people pull out, the start list won't change too much. But I would probably say Amelia Watkinson for the women. She's raced a bunch in Australia, and she's super fit right now. Um, Holly Lawrence, of course, always like the best 70.3 athlete in North America. And then who's the third one? Paula Finn. From Canada. I think I could be on the podium. If I, I think you've got a chance to be on the podium. <laughs> I would say I don't feel like I have a chance to be on the podium. Um, but <laughs> for the men, I, I think 
Lionel is going to be on the podium. I don't know if he'll win. Um, I would have said Blumenfeld or one of the Norwegians, but in their last, like Blumenfeld's got some sort of leg thing. Uh, they didn't look super hot at their last World Cup, but I think just like anything could happen. It's like the men's race is such a wild, wild thing. Rudy has been, Rudy Von Berg's been like completely silent from what I can tell that he could always have a good one. Well, you don't even follow him on the Instagram. No, no, I don't. So he's not silent. We just don't follow him. Every time I go to like, I wonder what Rudy's up to. It's, he seems to, he doesn't like, uh, We'll, we'll use Ben Ben Canute as the opposite example. He will is very vocal about like, oh, I'm training really well and everything's going really well. I feel like Rudy's just kind of like I'm training, so which I I appreciate. Any plans after Daytona? Well, it's impossible to make plans these days. But seventy point three Florida is a week later, so I think a lot of people have signed up for that with the hopes of just driving there after Daytona. We are reluctant to do that because of our Texas experience having that canceled and kind of the more uncertain nature of Ironman events. So. We could always change our flight, but currently our plan is just to fly back here, quarantine, and then do Christmas here. So yeah, yeah. just with like needing to get back, like especially for me <laughs> needing to get back into Canada, like running the risk of getting the coronavirus while down in Florida is is is, is high, and minimizing the amount of time that we're actually down there seems like a good idea. A couple of people have asked if we're going to do winter in Tucson again, and definitely yes, that's our plan. We love Tucson. We think it's optimal training location for winter in the US because it's way too cold up here. It's too cold in Portland, mm. Tucson. We've sort of like learned the ropes last year. We know where the good rides are. We know where the good runs are. We're super familiar with it. It has a pretty cool like coffee scene. And you know, we like that's important to us because we don't like spending like 24 seven focused on triathlon. So being able to go to, you know, do cool fun stuff like that is, yeah. is important for us as well. Yeah. Like of my favorite places to winter, like there's probably St. George, Tucson and San Diego and St. George can just be like, so hit or miss with the weather. Like one day you can wake up and it's sunny and the next day you wake up and it's like raining and freezing windy. And then San Diego has just gotten so incredibly busy. I could just, we don't feel super safe riding up and down <clears throat> the PCH and on some of the roads there anymore in Tucson's Tucson's a perfect. Tucson's rough everything. around the edges, but if you can find the edges, <laughs> it's uh, it's yeah. it's it's a pretty cool spot. I mean, it kind of makes it cool that it's rough around the edges. It's not like yeah, perfect San Diego or anything. But yeah. the bike path network is awesome as well. You can get out of town pretty easily and safely. So, um, how do you set training goals with uncertainty of races during COVID? Um, we we just we thought maybe Daytona would happen and it's a lot more fun to train for a race than to not have anything out there. We're definitely having been athletes since we were like, t you know, 10 years old or whatever, like our we're very goal or, you know, thing on the horizon motivated. And um, even if it doesn't happen, I think we're both pretty appreciative that there was something out there to to get ready for, to give purpose to going, yeah. you know, getting on the trainer again. I also think that it's. Um... It's like any so training hard. we're doing now definitely will help us next year. Like we've built a really good base this year. I've been healthy for a full year of running, which have, has literally never happened. So I think regardless of if Daytona goes forward, which I think it will, but, or even how our results go there, I think that no matter what next year will be a good year for us because we've had this time to kind of reset and start TTL and have other goals and just train without stress for a lot of months um, we've noticed as Daytona is approaching, we are getting a lot more stressed and anxious. And that's sort of how I feel all year when there's a normal season. So trying to kind of incorporate some of the mindset from back in March and, you know, April when races weren't happening and I was just training cause I liked it into now. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of a fine balance, but I certainly think that any training you guys are doing right now will help you next year for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we should wrap up fairly soon. So people are getting, might be getting bored. Hey Gilbert, thanks for thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Attempting to break 16 minute 5k <laughs> this week. Oh, that's pretty fast. Are you doing it? I guess if you're doing it on the track, I'd definitely wear spikes. And if you're doing it on the road, I'd go race flats. Nike. Yeah. The Nike Alpha whatever's. <laughs> yeah, on the track, spiked up, psyched up. <laughs> All right, one more question and then we'll uh, let you guys go do your Sundays. <clears throat> Do you like racing? <laughs> um, That's a funny question because to be honest, like I haven't missed it that much. <laughs> I think we we're missing it less than, than plenty of people. Um, and we're like really fortunate to have had a TTL um, to have this community and everything kind of like come together during this year. Otherwise I can't imagine somebody who doesn't have like a pretty intense <laughs> hobby or something this year. Um, 
you need to have something that kind of gives you purpose or something that a feeling of accomplishment outside of, of triathlon this year. Um, but yeah, I would say that like I missed getting ready for racing, but right up until like the week before racing is, is so unfun and stressful and packing and like that whole thing that you just watched, um, that part's no fun. And then basically once the gun's gone off, then it's fun again. <laughs> yeah we like yeah. the actual race part i think getting ready for texas like you just saw in this week's video was stressful because we haven't packed for a race for 12 months so yeah all the little things you forget like getting your tires ready getting all your nutrition organized <clears throat> all of that wasn't really fresh in our minds like i kind of forgot how to pack my bike properly and all this yeah. so once you do it once which we actually had like a test run now for texas and then we got to unpack it all and we get to repack in a week so <laughs> It was. Yeah. It wasn't all bad, but the most annoying part was bad. packing a GT bike and then unpacking a GT bike. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I still haven't unpacked my suitcase because I just feel so proud of how I magically fit everything in there, and I got a new camera bag that I organized. I, I haven't unpacked anything yet because it just it's so tragic. After how are triathletes making a living <laughs> with no races? Do sponsors pick up the tab? Um, well, the PTO has helped a ton with this. The professional triathlete organization paid out the bonuses at the beginning of the year, anticipating this would be a rough year. So they've been amazing and putting prize money into kind of like um, grassroots races for pros, putting money into this PTO race that's coming up in Daytona that should, that'll make a huge difference financially for a lot of people. For us, doing this TTL stuff has been a big difference maker in terms of making a living this year. Your support, buying this stuff that we make helps us a ton. But yeah, and, sponsors yeah. sponsors definitely help. There, there's a couple different levels of sponsorship <laughs> just to break down the whole pro thing for you real quickly. Like first couple of years in the sport before you have a name or whatever, you're kind of like getting products. So you're covering your expenses and then typically like putting flights on credit cards or maybe getting miles from people. And then at, once you've had a relationship with the company, then they start paying you a little bit of a salary. And ideally at some point you get to the point where you don't have to make money just to like keep from going hungry. You don't have to win races to keep from going hungry you know, your expenses and your life, your living stuff is covered. And we're, we're like, fortunately have been in the sport long enough to be at that point. Um, so if we don't win races, it is, it is tight. And Flynn is not, you know, getting any new accessories, but, uh, <laughs> if we win races, then, but then Flynn gets me to things are a lot less stressful. Let's see Flynn's freshly shaved beer. That's your dad. Hey, oh Flynn. no. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see if, if... this is Flynn's haircut. <laughs> So it used to have a lot more flow down here, but um, it was pretty matted and the, they just whoosh, took it right off. So we're, you know, everybody looks weird after you shave your beard off. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good Sunday.